I've been running through the winter for years, so I've got plenty of winter running gear. But what if I had to start over? These are the things I would buy if I had to start a winter running wardrobe today. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who runs through all four seasons of the year, even the coldest part of winter. And what I want to do with this series of if I had to start over is to kind of be a guide for people who are getting new to running or maybe new to a specific aspect of running and kind of help kind of break things down so it doesn't feel like you have to go buy all of the things all at once and spend a ton of money. I want to talk about how you can start getting into certain things like winter running by buying a few core pieces of gear that can help you start building that winter running wardrobe, get you through this year. And as you continue running through winters, start adding more things as you kind of figure out what your specific needs are. But before I get into that, I do want to go over some disclosures. I'm going to mention a lot of different brands and a lot of different products throughout the course of this video. Uh, some of this stuff that I'm going to mention is stuff that got sent to me for the purpose of prior videos and reviews. Other stuff I've purchased myself, but regardless of how a product gets to me, no one is paying me to make this video or in to include their product on this list and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about how I would start building a winter running wardrobe if I had to start over today. So some of the core things that I would start with are mittens. For me, hands get cold really fast and that's one of the first things that if they're too cold can stop a run dead in its tracks for me. Once it starts to get like even below 40 degrees, like well above freezing, my hands start to get cold and I want to have some thin running gloves. That's not really what we're talking about here. What I want to talk about for the most part is like temperatures around the freezing point and a little bit below the freezing point. And at those kinds of temperatures, I really want a pair of running mittens. The mittens let your hands stay closer together so they can have some kind of like, you know, body heat uh, and stay warmer. And plus then it's easier to kind of like ball everything up into a fist if things get really, really chilly. This is a pair of mittens that I bought multiple times from a company called Kraft. You're going to hear a lot about them throughout the course of this video because I think they make some of the best winter running apparel. They also make a lot of like winter sports apparel. So they have a lot of experience in terms of being active, but also staying warm. These mittens are great because they do a good job of blocking the wind. Plus they've got a lot of foam padding inside, which again serves as another winter wind blocking layer and also kind of helps retain some of the heat that your hands are generating. Those are not available on the Kraft website anymore. I think they've discontinued that specific model, but there's another one called the Core Insulate Mitten, which I think is very similar, if not pretty much the same mitten that's available for 45 bucks. You can also just kind of get regular mittens as long as they have some sort of like wind blocking layer and a little bit of padding foam or even kind of like faux fur on the inside. So there's a pair from Carhartt that are very similar to a pair of like deer skin mittens my mother-in-law bought for me for Christmas several years ago that I definitely use for a lot of winter running. Um, and that one is a little bit more affordable at $30. And I think is going to get a lot of people through a lot of winter running. So the next category that I want to talk about is covering the head. The head is something that you want to make sure that you're keeping warm, especially once those winds pick up. And for that, I want to reach for a winter hat. Uh, I've been running in a lot of winter hats from CLA. They're well known for their kind of cycling hats and their running hats, but now they're starting to make these kind of winter beanies. I love this one. They sent it to me, I think last year for a review. Uh, love the color, love the fit of it. It just fits really nice and snug and seems like very purpose built for physical activity. CLA also sent me, uh, this is a newer style of uh, winter running hat that they're making, which is kind of just like, a, kind of like a regular old beanie. Um, but I also have been really enjoying running in these. Uh, the quality is really nice and it's just a real pleasure to be able to wear on some of those colder days. Now there's a way that you can save a little bit of money in the winter running hats as well, because probably you already have a winter running hat if you live in an area with a winter climate. Um, so kind of 
any winter running hat will do. I'm a big fan of a winter beanie with a little palm on top. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with running with one of those. No one's going to look at you funny when you're out there running if you've got a big old floppy palm on top. And that kind of hat is some of my favorite kind of race swag to get. I'm not a huge fan of the race t-shirts anymore, but like a good winter running hat with a nice beanie on top, I'm a huge fan. Or Carhartt makes a lot of really great winter stuff. I like to get them because they're 20 bucks and they make a lot of their stuff in blaze orange. And if you run in the winter in a place where there's a lot of hunters or hunting going on, I always feel a little bit better having something that is that blaze orange color as I'm running through the woods. Now we've talked about some extremities. Let's get to kind of like what's on your chest. And again, a lot like the beanie or the winter hat, like you probably already have enough to at least get started running in the winter. So don't worry about necessarily having to go out and buy something specific for winter running. If you've got like a hoodie, like a sweatshirt with a hood on it, something that's thick and heavy, even if it might be cotton, that's going to be totally fine. Put a, a tech t-shirt underneath there, uh, even if it's a t-shirt and run out there with the hoodie, you're gonna be fine. If you're just trying to get out there and get your easy run in for 30, 60, or even 90 minutes, it's probably going to be plenty when combined with a hat and mittens. But at that freezing point, you do have quite a bit of flexibility. I've been recently enjoying something that Junk Brands sent me. Junk Brands makes like headbands and stuff, uh, but they sent me this new performance hoodie that they make, which has a water resistant outer layer and then a soft fleece inner layer. It's like kind of like a micro fleece. So it's really thin, it's really lightweight, uh, but it also is like a lot warmer than it looks and feels in terms of like weight. So I've been really enjoying that one. That one is $70, but it works really well at that kind of like freezing point of temperature paired with either a short sleeve tech tee or a long sleeve tech tee or a running shirt. Um, but if you want to save a little bit of money, uh, there's a company on Amazon called Bayleaf or Belief. I'm not sure exactly how you say it. Um, they make a lot of kind of like knockoff clothes. And one that I've really enjoyed from theirs is their thermal long sleeve. It's got like a scuba hoodie kind of thing. And it's like a stretchy but thicker tech material, which makes it feel a little bit kind of wind resistant, a little bit water resistant, although not technically windproof or waterproof. Um, I really do like that one, but it doesn't look like they sell that one anymore. I bought it a couple years back. Looking quickly through the Bayleaf store or Belief store, there is a like a puffer jacket that they have where it's like puffy on the front and then kind of like a stretchy fleece on the sleeves and on the back. And I really like that style of jacket because then it blocks wind on your core, but kind of lets heat out in some of the other places. So that way you're not going to get too clammy. Um, that one is $44. And again, like I said, Bayleaf does a lot of knockoff designs. There's actually a craft version of that. I know there's a lot of companies that make that style of jacket, but there's one that looks like that, that I've been recently enjoying from Kraft, and that's on sale right now for not that much more. It's at $56. The color that I have is the blue and white one. There's only like smalls left in that one, but in the black and gray, which I think looks really nice, uh, there's a lot of sizes available still at that $56 price. So that is something that I think is definitely well worth the $12 bump in price, but both of those are going to be really good options to get you through a lot of kind of like around freezing temperature and slightly below freezing temperature running. I would pair that with either like a short sleeve or a long sleeve underneath there and my mittens and my hat. As far as pants go, I tend to like running in tights um, for a lot of my runs. One of my favorites has been a pair of tights from Rabbit. They're called the Pocket Tights. Tights with a Z. I don't know why they put the Z on there for. Um, it's got lots of great pockets on the side, one on each side on the hips, like kind of like the middle of the thigh on the sides though. Um, and you can fit gels in there. You can fit car keys, a phone in there, and there's a back zipper pocket as well, which is really nice and convenient. It's got like a micro fleece lining on the inside, which I really enjoy, but the price is a little steep at a hundred bucks. I think it's well worth it. I use it all the time. I have it in two colors, but I can understand that it might be a little expensive if you're buying a bunch of other stuff at the same time. Another pair of running pants that I would look at as a way to save money is going back to Amazon. There's a company on there. I think they're out of the UK. They sell, I think mainly through Amazon. It's called TCA. 
They have this like jogger pant, which I think works really well. There's only 30 bucks, so you can buy a couple of pairs of those that get you through a lot of winter running. It's a tapered fit. It's kind of like a, almost like a soccer warm-up pant. And I really love that silhouette for running pants. Um, and I think it works really well. I've had multiple pairs of those. So that I think would be kind of like the cheaper option. And if you only have like one pair of like pants that you're gonna run in the winter, you might not necessarily want it to be tight. So I'm gonna recommend that people go with that TCA version. So um, the only other thing I would say is maybe like taller socks. I usually wear like low cut or no show socks. So having that exposed ankle and Achilles can get a little bit chilly sometimes, especially if there's a lot of snow out. So maybe get some like quarter length or crew length socks or sometimes even taller if you really wanna get crazy. Um, but there's not, I think a ton of things that you need to be able to get through running and what I suspect is like what most people around the country are experiencing for their winter running temps. Let's talk now a little bit like kind of like objectives. I talked about like layering and things that I think could kind of pair together, but let's talk about like what I'm trying to accomplish by some of this stuff is, so like what I really wanna make sure I'm doing is avoiding getting wet. Like I, anything that gets wet when it gets cold will freeze or make you chilly. And so like overdressing, like if you put on your like thickest winter coat, your thickest mittens, your thickest everything, that'll keep you warm. But once you start running, it might not be that comfortable to run in number one. But once you start running, if you start sweating, then that wetness is going to stay in there. The cold winter air is going to hit it and it's going to chill you just kind of like sweat in the summer cools you off. And so when I first start running, um, I should be a little bit on the chilly side, a little bit uncomfortable, not like painfully cold, but a little bit uncomfortable. And then that way, after a couple of miles into the run, then I'll feel like good. And then maybe I might be sweating a little bit by the end, but it's not like I'm gonna be out there for like another hour while I've already gotten like soaking wet, uh, which could be a problem in some of those colder winter temps. So you wanna start off a little bit on the chilly side so you end up just right by the time you get to kind of like the middle of the run. And that's really my goal. So let me just say that like when you're starting out, you probably already have a lot of the stuff that you need. You could just like layer it all on and figure out what works for you. Take stuff off if it's getting too hot, that kind of thing. Um, and you can figure it out, but just don't let the not having the stuff stop you. I think my first winter of running, I bought a pair of Pegasus Shields um, and I used a pair of uh, gloves that I would wear to commute to work. And the jacket that I would wear was a sweatshirt hoodie, a zip up that I got from as race swag from a hot chocolate 15K that I'd run. So you can get through it probably with stuff you already have, but if you wanna get a couple of things, hopefully this video has been helpful. So if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?